Ever since 6ix9ine and Gunna have snitched, the rat title's been thrown around between the two, almost as if they're fighting over the title. But surprisingly, these two are not the first rappers to snitch. On May 31, 2009, Drake, who was an up-and-coming artist in Toronto at the time, was out getting dinner with a lady friend who was later identified as Chantel Brown. As the story goes, the two of them were walking down Beatrice Street, making their way to Drake's parked SUV. But as they arrived at the SUV, that's when things went south. Two masked men pulled up on Drake with a pole, demanding Drake to give them his jewelry and any cash that was on him at the time. Knowing Drake, he was definitely trying to find a way out. But when you're held at gunpoint, there aren't really any options. He handed over his gold and diamond necklace, his several thousand dollar Audemars Piguet watch, and two thousand dollars in American bills. That's when Nicholas Serino, a random person walking out of the restaurant, saw the robbery going on. According to police, Nicholas ended up yelling at the masked robbers saying to get the fuck back. That's when the masked thieves got scared, but with the jewelry and cash already in hand, they made a run for it in a getaway car that was parked just a few cars away. But as they were trying to get away, they made a wrong turn and ended up driving on a one-way. What's so bad about this? Well, as they turned, they were actually going the opposite way of traffic. This caught the attention of authorities that were in the area, leading the robbers to be pulled over. But this traffic stop didn't end so well. Two men in the car attempted to run on foot, almost caught along with the driver. However, third was able to make good in his escape. Surprisingly, the two men that were arrested by police eventually had the charges of armed robbery and possession of stolen property dropped, pleading guilty to only conspiracy to commit robbery. I served less than six months in jail when the men were going through the legal system, Drake cooperated with authorities, but it wasn't exactly forthcoming in his cooperation. When the news made headlines, Drake was called a snitch by another Toronto-based rapper, which may even float him to not cooperate as much as he could have. Drake later stated that the robbery was a setup since they knew where he'd been, telling the Rolling Stones, I knew it was a setup because I had on a sweater and a jacket when they banged on the car window with a gun, and opened the door, the first thing he said was, yo, run that chain. I didn't rob my date and her purse was sitting right there, so I was like, okay, yep, you set the whole thing up. Number 2. Snoop Dogg There are many conspiracy theories surrounding the mysterious murders of Tupac and Biggie, some of which suggest that Snoop Dogg's claims about the assailant being connected to Death Row Records played a role. These claims emerged after a 1998 police report came to light, detailing an incident where Snoop was attacked by men who recognized him as part of Death Row Records, from which he'd recently separated. Snoop, along with his friends, managed to evade the men who attempted to assault him. During the incident, Snoop was found in possession of marijuana leading to his arrest. The report mentioned that Snoop was cooperative and even expressed gratitude towards the deputies for being present, as he believed the assault was intended to intimidate him. He confided in the authorities, expressing that he felt in grave danger after leaving Death Row Records and signing with his new label, No Limit Records. This incident occurred just a year after Biggie's death and two years after Tupac's. Given Snoop's close relationship with Tupac, he had insider knowledge about the responsible parties. Snoop saw his arrest as an opportunity to disclose his beliefs about who killed Tupac. The report stated that Snoop mentioned the man sitting next to Tupac, and when asked if he meant Suge Knight, he affirmed it. However, despite Snoop's testimony, Prosecutors did not thoroughly investigate Knight for the incident. Some view Snoop's disclosure as snitching, as he implicated Suge Knight in the killing of Tupac Shakur. Number 3. 6 9 Although Takashi has previously encountered police, his most significant and memorable legal issue came in 2019 when he pled guilty to conspiracy to commit murder and firearms charges. These charges stem from an arrest a year prior, which involved Takashi and members of the Nine Trey Gangsters, including his manager Shadi Jordan. It appeared that Takashi had some awareness of a potential investigation, as he'd mentioned in an interview a few months before his arrest that he feared God and the FBI. Takashi's imprisonment in the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn immediately presented some challenges. Due to his gang affiliation with the Nine Trey Gang, which was associated with the Bloods and his involvement with some members of the Crips, Takashi had enemies within the prison system. Shortly after being relocated, Takashi pled guilty to the charges he was facing, which carried a mandatory sentence of 47 years in prison. However, in February 2019, a document surfaced revealing that Takashi had provided legal testimony that assisted in investigations against his fellow Nine Trey members. This revelation indicated that a reduced sentence would be considered. The rumors of Takashi snitching were confirmed in December 2019 when a judge decided to sentence him to two years in prison, which was earlier than expected. Following his sentencing, Takashi faced widespread criticism from the rap community and the public. However, in March, a judge announced that Takashi would be released from prison 
and placed under house arrest. Despite the controversy surrounding him, Takashi returned with a new song that broke records, and it seemed that his fans remained unfazed by the negative publicity. Number 4. Gunna Gunna, along with Young Thug and several others, were arrested on charges related to illegal racketeering activities. The group they were associated with, known as Young Slime Life or Young Stoner Life (YSL), faced accusations of engaging in criminal activities. Gunna remained in prison in Georgia since his arrest in May, but in late 2022, he was released after pleading guilty to one charge of conspiracy to violate the RICO Act. It's important to note that Gunna claimed an Alford plea meaning he maintained his innocence while acknowledging that pleading guilty was in his best interest. Gunna clarified that his involvement with YSL was primarily focused on entertainment and music. He described it as a group of individuals from Metro Atlanta with shared interests and artistic aspirations rather than a gang. Gunna emphasized that the music produced by YSL artists exaggerated and glorified aspects of urban life in the black community. Despite pleading guilty, Gunna made it clear that he hadn't provided any statements, interviews, cooperation, or intention to testify or be involved in the trial process against anyone involved in the case. He wanted to dissociate himself from the trial and emphasized his dedication to music and his desire to contribute positively to the community. Gunna's attorney, Steve Sadow, confirmed the terms of his plea agreement, stating that Gunna would serve one year in prison, which was commuted to time served, and complete 500 hours of community service. The remaining four years of his sentence were suspended. However, Gunna's plea deal and release from prison triggered a backlash from other rappers. Lil Durk, Lil Baby, and Meek Mill, who were previously associated with Gunna, ended up distancing themselves from him due to Gunna snitching in court, agreeing that YSL was in fact a gang. Number 5. YNW Melly YNW Melly, whose real name is Jamel Maurice Demons, is an American rapper and songwriter. He gained significant attention and popularity in the music industry with tracks like Mixed Personalities, Suicidal, and Murder on My Mind. But why has Melly made it on this list? Well, in 2018, rapper YNW Melly was arrested after an alleged drive-by that had happened while Melly and three of his close friends were out one night after a studio session. Melly claimed that the car pulled up right next to them, letting off shots on the passenger side of the vehicle. These shots ended up putting two of YNW Melly's friends' lives on pause. Melly also later claimed that he went to the hospital to get some help for two of his friends, but that wasn't at all how it happened. In fact, it was Melly's friend, YNW Cortland, who went to the hospital, while YNW Melly left the scene to clear his head. This led people to believe that YNW Melly snitched himself out, but they realized that certain things didn't line up as they should. For example, the car seemed to be relatively undamaged outside of only eight holes, which wouldn't line up with a drive-by if they were unloaded upon by multiple people. Those small details very much add up, not to mention the way his friends were hit and killed didn't line up with the drive-by story either. Investigators thoroughly examined the scene and found evidence that the drive-by was indeed an inside job that YNW Melly was a part of. Usually, the bullet shell flies either backwards or to the side of the firearm, not in front of it. Even in close proximity, it wouldn't have ended up as it was in the car. In this case, the left rear side of the car, which is the opposite side of where the holes were located. Not the answers they were expecting to find, and that's never a good sign, as that means someone was lying. Or in this case, multiple people were. As the investigation into what really happened continued, they eventually found evidence that showed Cortland, Williams, Thomas Jr., and YNW Melly getting into the car that the others would be heard in. Go ahead and do us a favor by leaving a like on the video, subscribing to the channel, and hitting the bell icon so you never miss an upload from us.